The Lord be with you. Welcome to the Divine Service this evening. I just want to point out to you uh, that our first hymn is found in your bulletin in the insert. In Jesus I find rest and peace. It's a very beautiful hymn. I learned it as a child in Sunday school and I sing it to myself uh, whenever I feel down. It's a wonderful, comforting hymn. Uh, that points us to Christ Jesus, who is our peace. Uh, please turn your bulletins over. Below the weekly schedule, we will recite together the table of duties. To workers of all kinds, slaves obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but like slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men, because you know that the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does, whether he is slave or free. Ephesians 6, 5 through 8. Let us say our opening hymn.
let us draw near with true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, the poor sinful believer. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a call and your name, servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stand by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
orders all things, both in heaven and on earth. We humbly implore you to put away from us all hurtful things, and to give us those things that are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Immediately he got into the boat 
with his disciples and went to the district of El Lanuth. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
of God's Word, which we consider today the Holy Spirit caused to be recorded in Mark chapter 8. Let us pray. These are your words, Heavenly Father, sanctify us by the truth. Your Word is true. Amen. Nate, would you mind turning the uh, recorder so that it's pointed at me? People could still hear me if they're watching over the internet, but they might want to see me. Grace, peace, and mercy to you, O God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus fed 4,000 people with just seven loaves of bread and a few small fish. And St. Matthew tells us that this 4,000 didn't even include the women and children. So you can imagine how big this crowd actually was. This miracle shows us that Jesus is God who opens his hands and satisfies the desires of every living thing. This shows us that God will provide for our bodies. As the birds of the air need not worry, neither do we. Our Heavenly Father knows what we need, and he will provide for us. This also teaches us to seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, because God will add all the rest of this to us. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. God cares for our bodies so generously, so that we will not worry, but will look to Him for our spiritual and eternal. And didn't we learn this very lesson not too long ago? Indeed, we've heard nearly an identical story just four months ago, the fourth Sunday of Lent, when Jesus fed the 5,000 with just five barley loaves and two small fish, and they had 12 baskets of fragments of is this an accidental repetition? Perhaps Jesus fed a large crowd of people. Some said it was 5,000, some said it was 4,000, so we really are just reviewing the exact same story. Do you think that's what happened? It's just a mix-up in the storytelling? Well, no. In fact, Jesus fed a crowd of 5,000 not including women and children. And a short time later, he fed another crowd of 4,000 men. Both St. Matthew and St. Mark report both of these miracles in their gospel accounts. And Jesus reminds his disciples of both of these feedings later on in this same chapter of Mark. Yet why do Matthew and Mark record both of these miraculous feasts? St. John only records the feeding of the 5,000. And aren't these, aren't these two miracles similar enough that they could have just recorded one or the other? Certainly Jesus performed many other miracles that are not listed in the Gospels. And why did the ancients deem it necessary to record both of these feelings in the lectionary so that we hear them both every year. Well, certainly the main emphasis of both of these stories is worth repeating. God will provide for your physical needs and he wants you to seek from him even more your eternal spiritual needs. Yet as similar as these two stories are, they are not identical. The feeding of the 5,000 was primarily a feeding of Jews. Jesus fed them with five barley loaves. Five loaves of bread symbolized the first five, or the five books of Moses, which make up the Torah, the holy book of there were 12 baskets of fragments left over. 
which symbolized the 12 tribes of Israel. Even the Greek word for basket was distinct from the word for basket used when Jesus fed the fourth us. These baskets referred to containers used in Jewish ceremonies. This feeding of 5,000 Israelites demonstrated that Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophecy from Deuteronomy 18, which stated that God would raise up a prophet like Moses from among the Jews. As God fed the people of Israel bread from heaven in the wilderness through Moses, so now Jesus, who is greater than Moses, feeds God's people. The feeding of 4,000 is different. Jesus used seven loaves of bread and seven baskets of bread are left over. The number seven can, can symbolize completeness, it's a holy number. It could also represent the seven Gentile nations around Israel. The place where this meeting took place is populated with many Gentiles. It's shown right before this miracle when Jesus meets the uh, Canaanite woman as he left the region of Tyre and Sinai. So while the feeding of the 5,000 shows that Jesus is the Messiah promised to the Jewish people, the feeding of the 4,000 shows that Jesus did not come only for the Jews, but for people of all nations. This, of course, is wonderful news for us, and for all people around the world. You do not have to follow your gene genealogical line to discover whether God's mercy is meant for you. We marvel that God fed the nation of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years, without them putting a plow to the ground or planting any seed. Yet, we should also mark that God continued to provide food for all nations around the world, holding and sheltering them as well. God cares for the body of people. He shows that He cares for them. It is a sign that He desires also to save their souls. You won't trust that God for your eternal salvation, if he is unable to provide for your temporal needs. So God provides for the needs of all people everywhere to show his desire to save both their bodies and souls forever. Of course, this lesson is consistent with all of Scripture. God told Abraham, the father of the people of Israel, that in his seed all nations of the earth would be blessed. All nations. And St. Paul repeatedly declares that God shows no partiality and makes no distinction between Jew and Gentiles, but rather all are children of Abraham and of God himself through faith in Jesus. And by feeding this great crowd of Gentiles, Jesus shows that he comes to feed the bread of life to all people everywhere. The number four represents the four winds which go across the whole earth. The number 1,000 symbolizes completeness. By feeding 4,000 Gentiles, Jesus shows that God has compassion on all people and desires to satisfy their every need. If you do not believe that God will satisfy the wants of your body, now in this temporal life, you will never believe that God will provide eternal life for you. If God cannot do a little work, He certainly cannot do a mighty work either. So with every meal you eat and fill your belly, God wants to remind you that He desires to feed your soul as well. When you put your clothes on, and fall asleep under your roof. He wants you to know that He cares for you beyond what you can see or feel. Because it is not food for your belly or clothes for your body, which are your greatest need, but the teaching of Christ, which gives you eternal life. Now this isn't to be confused with the prosperity gospel that says that the wealthier you are, the better your life is, the 
before God is pleased with you. But rather, the fact that God does provide for you and gives you what you need shows that He loves you and desires to do much greater things for you. After Jesus fed the 5,000 Jews, the Jews searched for Him because they wanted more bread. They were disappointed when Jesus wanted rather to feed them the bread of life from heaven, which gives eternal salvation to all who feast on him in faith. This is the curse of our mortal lives. We focus on the temporal needs of the body and fret over them, as if fretting ever gave us a morsel of food to eat. And we ignore the greater gift God seeks to give us. Likewise, shortly after Jesus fed the 4,000, he told his disciples to beware of the false teaching of the Pharisees by telling them to watch out for the leaven of the Pharisees. You know what leaven is, right? Leaven, you put it in bread and it makes it rise. I know you older people know it. You give the younger people no bake. You call it yeast and it makes it rise. But if you put a little bit of leaven in there, it infects the whole thing. You can't separate it. So he says, watch out for the false teaching of the Pharisees, but he uses a figure of speech. He says, beware of the leaven. And then Jesus marvels uh, at their lack of faith because the disciples then begin to bicker because they had only packed one loaf of bread and did not have enough for everyone. So Jesus mentions leaven, and they start fretting about bread. So Jesus marvels at their lack of they had just witnessed them feed a crowd of 5,000, and then another crowd of 4,000 with just a handful of bread. Yet here they worried about not having enough bread. Jesus did these signs so that they would focus on his teaching rather than worry about their next meal. So difficult it is for us to focus on what is the most important and stop fretting over that which God has already taken care of. And we need to learn this lesson today. What should you be most concerned about today? Money? To pay your bills? To feed your family? Your job? The economy? Our nation? Your health? What you will eat, where, and where you will live. Has God not only already shown you over and over and over again that He will provide all these things for you? What then does God want you to be concerned for? Watch out for the leaven of the Pharisees. Beware of false teaching. Make sure that you are learning the pure word of God. That is your most pressing need. It is always your most pressing need. The bread of life from heaven will be lost if you follow teachings invented by men. That that you can't afford. But the food you need for your body, don't worry about that. God already knows how he will provide it for you as he has already shown you many times before. Sure, he may make you wait, as the crowd waited three days before Jesus satisfied their physical hunger. They desired more than food of this for the soul, and for that they were rewarded. The love of the Pharisees covers up Christ, Jesus, and his work of salvation for you. The Pharisees focused on their own outward works, Instead of trusting the mercy of God promised in His Son. They despise the sacrifice Christ made for the sins of the whole world. As Jesus told His disciples to watch out for, his, for this leaven, which will poison the loaf and make it no good. So He tells us today to beware of the false prophets and their teaching. Beware of anything that covers up Christ distracts you from him. 
his comment today is try not to focus on the different teachings of different groups, but rather try to focus on what we all have in common, that we all love Jesus. And some people go so far as to say that as long as we believe in God, uh, or believe in one God, that it doesn't matter what else we believe, claiming that Christians, Muslims, and Jews worship the same God. But such a simplifying of religion does not reveal Christ as the only Savior, but covers him up and covers up his works as well. Puts a muzzle on Jesus so that we cannot learn from him. And since not everyone can agree on what Jesus has done, because not everyone will look to the clear words of Christ in Scripture. They focus not on Jesus' work, but on their own works. The mission of the church has changed into caring for people's bodies or their perceived needs, instead of caring for people's souls. Now, Christians should certainly help to provide for the needy in their bodies, as God has been generous to us, so ought we to be generous to others. But the mission of the church is to feed the souls of sinners. Only the bread of life, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a sacrifice for all sins, can feed the souls of the world. To listen to Jesus and to learn from him takes faith. You must believe and trust that God will provide for your physical needs so that you look to be fed spiritually as well. And you must trust that the words that Jesus says are true and important for you to believe and confess. In this lesson, Jesus shows us that God will always provide for the needs of our body, even if we must wait for Him. And He shows that our greatest need in this life is to listen to Him, to believe what He says to trust in His promises of forgiveness and salvation. He loves you. He forgives you. He saved you for Christ's sake. And to pay attention to reject any teaching that rejects or covers up your Savior, Jesus Christ. If we learn to so trust in Jesus, we will find that we will be satisfied in both of us. Yes. Amen. Please The peace of God has called us to take your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.
protect and bless your servants, the President of the United States, the Governor of this state, our judges, magistrates, and law and authority. Put them for their high calling, by the gift of your spirit of wisdom and fear, so that we may lead a quiet, peaceful life. All godliness and reverence. According to your promise, O God, be the defender of the widow, the father of the old and orphan, relieve and comfort the sick and sorrowful, especially our brother and brothers and sisters who are ill and suffering, Marilyn Walters, Kate Lynn Clark, Natalie Cole, Lloyd Eskin, John Bailey, Bob Francis, Carly Gibbons, Bob Saber, Kathy Jones, Janice Manning, Alice Tennyson, Wendy Sager, Lynn Blackwell, Jamie Scott, Chris Risedale, Renee Jones, Ruth Kanur, Steve Rasmussen, Heidi Parker, Tina Stephan, Paul Denise Rappers, Penny Carter, Martin Webster, Cheryl Lundgren, Susan Bragger, Michael Volk, Lily Marchand, and Trisha Klein. Graciously, graciously help those who are assaulted by the devil and who are in the peril of death. For the strength of those who are suffering, for the sake of Christ's holy name, grant that we may live together in peace and prosperity. Bestow upon us good and seasonable weather, and bless us with upright Christian counsel and all that we undertake. We especially commend to your care and keep in this your congregation which you have bought with the great Christ. Keep from us all offenses, and bind us together in the unity of your holy love. Grant that the little ones who are baptized in your name may be brought up in your fear. At your table, give to those who dare to do with you peace and life of lasting. Be merciful, O God, to all according to your great love in Christ Jesus our Lord. When our final hour comes, grant us a blessed departure from this world, and on the last day, a resurrection to your Lord. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name which was betrayed to bread, when he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take heed. This is my body, which is given for you. Let's do it in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup of the supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood. To shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Let's do his offerings and drink it. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Take a drink. 
true blood of Christ shall be for the forgiveness of sins. God bless you, Maria. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, take faith with you, the true faith of the last days. In part, peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you.